Hello, hello, and good day. I am Coach Jay. I always like to start my classes with a corny dad joke, and here is today's. Where do fruits go on vacation? Fruits go on vacation to hair s. But um bum. All right. If you can take two deep healing breaths with me and through the nose, out through the mouth. If you can close your eyes, great. However, you feel safe. And one more time. All right. Today, I'm going to be talking about some phrases that we often say that um, we could rephrase to sound more confident. One of the many, many areas that are shaken after broken trust or a bomb that goes off in our life is our confidence. So today, I just wanted to get your brain turning to start thinking of ways that you can sound a little bit more confident, even if we are not feeling confident, as oftentimes in life, um, where we don't feel confident, especially in certain social settings. But like I said, most certainly when a life bomb goes off and Sometimes we just have to reach for that, fake it till you make it. Confidence um, is a very important trait. Who doesn't want to be seen uh, and assured and capable, feel capable? It helps to succeed at work. It helps to succeed in relationships. And it helps our kids learn how to act with confidence as well. It's smart then to keep an eye for ways in which you might be sabotaging how confident, confidently others are viewing you. How we communicate is one such area that many of us struggle. Using certain phrases and even certain words, not to mention body language, tone of voice, facial movements, and so forth, um, all add to the um, betrayal and what we're putting forth as far as confidence. Because awareness is everything and acknowledge is power, I wanted to present a few phrases um, that make you sound slightly less confident and what to maybe consider instead. And like I said, this is just to get your brain turning. So throughout the day and throughout your days, when you hear yourself saying similar statements, you can say these instead or use simply different terms and uses. All right. Number one, when we say, what do you think about that? Now, there's nothing wrong with asking questions whatsoever, but you should be careful how you go about doing it. Saying, what do you think, or asking, what do you think, can come off as though you are not confident in your own solutions or opinions or are looking for approval or guidance, and that's typically a sign of insecurity. If you were to instead rephrase that statement, such as, this is what I think, I'm wondering if you have thoughts or feedback that might help me look into the situation differently. Or you can just say, you know, this is what I put on the table. Do you have any thoughts um, that you want to put on the table? As opposed to just a blanket, what do you think? And this can go towards anything, you know, going out to lunch, you know. Um, this is where I'd like to go. Um, what are your thoughts with that? As opposed to, I don't care, what do you think? So it's more of a assert, you know, friendly, assertive fashion way to speak. All right. Second one, um, we can just do whatever you want. Lack of confidence is very apparent in people who can't make decisions or defer to others to make decisions for them. This phrase makes it explicit. It means we don't have to confront our insecurity or stand up to others if what we want is different from what they want. So to combat this, start by identifying what it is that you want and communicating that. So for instance, I'm leaning towards X, but I'm also aware that it might be different from what you want. Let's figure a way to work this out together to get what we want. And again, I'll use the restaurant um, example. Um, I don't know what restaurants are in the area that you're watching, but you know, um, I would like to go to Red Lobster but I understand you're not big on seafood. So where could we go that accommodates both of us? You know, that way you're putting your assertions forward, um, but you're also certainly open to what somebody um, wants to put on the table as well. So um, next one, you're you're always better at me um, at this stuff. And this is something I hear often and, and it's supposed to be a compliment, 
Um, self-deprecating or self-deprecation, it's a classic tool for those who like to hide or mask their insecurities. And it does serve as almost a compliment to someone else. However, it does not inspire confidence in people if you are constantly lauding their strengths at the expense of your own. So in the long run, if you're always telling people how much better at various tasks they are, it could lead people to question what exactly you are good at. Um, if you're always around people and always saying, oh, you're much better at this and you do a better job at that and you're much more experienced in this way, then, you know, the people around you are like, well, then what exactly are, are your gifts that you're bringing to the table? So we often use comparison and other people's strengths to highlight our perceived weaknesses. If this is a common phrase that you find yourself saying, try to change it something it's just slightly something to a more, you know, you've had more practice at this. Um, can you show me how to do it so I can improve? Um, or even it's okay that I'm struggling at this now. I'm still learning. Um, now you can even say, you know, you're better at this. You know, this is something I'm 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 getting better at for now. So it's really, you know, quantifying that certainly at the I mean, listen, we we, we are not the end all be all. I mean, you know, we all have our certain different strengths. But that doesn't mean that you have to put yourself down um, just because somebody happens to be a little bit better for whatever reason in some areas than you are. Next one, I wonder what they'll think or feel about me. No one is blaming you for thinking this, but voicing it aloud screams a lack of confidence. It's natural to want to be accepted by others, and we also need to be able to navigate social study settings or professional settings, even if we are not necessarily um, the most sought out person. It's more important to be comfortable and genuine with yourself. So um, again, you can think to yourself, I wonder what this person thinks of me. But when you when you hear somebody say, you know, what do you think about me? Or are you mad at me? I, I don't know why people say that a lot of times. Are you mad at me? My first response is who gives a crap if they're mad at you? Are they paying your bills? You know, I mean, unless it's somebody you're living with or, you know, a close person, people can wake up on the wrong side of the bed and be mad at you. Why would that change who you are or how you live your day? Uh, speaking of, are you mad at me? Um, I'm going to bring that up. People who are insecure often misread social cues and internal internalize them. So believing that someone's mood must be about them or about you as a result of something that you did. You know, we also can misinterpret their emotions to be about us based on the fear that we did something wrong. So instead of all of those assumptions, how about instead assuming or interpret, um, it's simply best to ask, how are you feeling? So, you know, if you want to ask somebody, are you mad at me? Or did I do something wrong? Or what have you? Simply say, hey, how are you feeling? What are your thoughts right now? Um, and leave it as that. Because like I said, you know, I'll... Um, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I was on the bus. This was years ago. I was taking public transportation and it was a very crowded bus and people were standing up and there was this kid, young guy standing and I was reading the poster above his head and it was in Spanish. So I, so, and I was kind of far away. So I had to squint and come to find out it was some STD ad. So I probably didn't have, I probably had like a slightly weird look on my face and I was squinting and whatever. And finally the kid said to me, what's wrong with you? Why do you keep giving me dirty looks? And I, and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm reading the ad above your head. But it just goes to show you that our interpretations can be so off. So just be, you know, you never know what somebody's thinking, what they're going through, if they're even looking at you. So don't personalize things. And if you do, clarify it. Hey, what are your thoughts? Instead of, um, are you mad at me? Or did I do something wrong to upset you? Next one is, uh, I need time to think. I don't know what to choose. We all do this at stores, especially when we go clothes shopping. Excuse me. Hmm. I don't know what to choose. A no-dose or coffee? Just kidding. Taking a moment to process a decision and weigh your options is fine. However, it can convey insecurity when you make it sound as though you don't know how to decide something. So when you sound rattled or flustered when making a decision, it could make people question your ability to um, make confident and sound choices. 
Uh, ideally, we want to replace uh, this statement with a less insecure, but insecure one, but it still gives you time to think things through. So maybe try some something along the lines of, I'm not certain yet, I need time to decide, you know, please be patient with me, or thank you for being patient. Um, while I figure this out, what's right for me, um, in terms of what I want. This also helps out. Um, a lot of people are uncomfortable saying no. A lot of people don't like to say no. A lot of people believe or interpret saying no is either not a complete sentence or somehow offensive. And so this is also a technique that you can implement. Instead of saying no, saying something along the lines of, you know what, I'm not certain yet. Let me have some time to decide um, instead of no, if you have an issue or a problem saying no. Next one is, I can't believe they left the house looking like that. You might think that by commenting on somebody else's appearance that you're making yourself look better by comparison, but in reality, you're only conveying how insecure you are about your own appearance. Um, so it, you know, it could make it sound as if you're trying to redirect the focus from your own insecurities by shining the light on other people's imperfections. It could be very difficult to accept whatever we're wearing or accept our bodies or accept how we're leaving the house. A more balanced rephrase of this would be to decrease the judgment and the comparison of others and focus on acceptance of the self. So we don't need to um, at all comment on somebody else's style. Um, and I'll tell you something, this is personal to me because when I go out, I mean, you you see me with dress shirts on and stuff, but if I'm going to go out to a social gathering, I am going out with flair. My spouse, however tuxedo or suit all the time. So, um, so, uh, you know, we've grown to accept you, you have your style. I have mine. We accept. Now, don't get me wrong. If you leave the house and you're going to a teacher's meeting for your kids and you look like a hobo, fine. Somebody says something to you, but in general, check your, take the, you know, what out of your own eye before you try to take the toothpick out of somebody else's. The next phrase is, could you maybe Sometimes people think that inserting the word maybe into a request can convey politeness or respect, but actually it communicates a lack of confidence and insecurity. Keep in mind, and this is a side note, maybe is another way to say might be. So a lot of times people in general say maybe when it's actually an incorrect statement on its own because maybe technically means might be. Um, so that's just a side note. Um, it makes us sound nervous and like we're embracing or anticipating rejection. Although it's an important, it's very important to be polite. There are ways to be polite while simultaneously presenting yourself as confident. You may be in a situation where you want to ask a coworker to read over an email before sending it out, but you see the coworker is currently busy with another task. So rather than asking, could you maybe read this over, uh, you know, when you get a chance, you can say something along the lines of this. Whenever you get a chance, will you read this over before I send it out? So it's the same thing, but you're sounding a little bit more confident. Removing maybe um, allows you to sound more confident and sure of what you're asking. Um, and it's still giving somebody the respect that it doesn't have to be done at this moment. The next phrase is, I would just... Um, now, let me just tell you this. Out of all of these um, that I've mentioned, uh, I actually quite use this one the most. So when I was doing research for this class, this is the one I kind of chuckle at because I use just quite a lot. I use just in my emails. I use just in my classes. I use just in my coaching class, uh, um, sessions. Um, just, quote, just is another word that people think sounds friendly and polite but serves all it does is serves to downplay your message and it really softens the impact. So for example, in the sentence, I would just like to follow up with you about this project I'm working on. The project's importance is diminished by using the word just. So eliminating just from the sentence um, and simply stating it, well, there I go, see, I use simply, and stating it, <laughs> I would like to follow up with you about this project that I'm working on um, it gets the same exact exact message across as opposed to I'm just following up on, you know, whatever. Um, it, it sounds less 
bold. And in this case, bold doesn't necessarily mean assertive or aggressive, just um, confident. And that's what we're working on is our confidence. Um, all right. Before bringing this class to an end, I just want to say, oh, there you go. See, I just want to say, <laughs> I got to take that word just out of my vocabulary. I want to say um, that the majority of what I stated here are far easier to tweak if you um, are not a people pleaser. If you are watching this and you are a people pleaser, you have an additional mountain to climb um, before even attempting to make these changes because people pleasers are constantly seeking affirmation, constantly seeking to please, constantly seeking that validation. And when people pleasers are set out to do those things, we often want to minimize or diminish our own needs so we can please others. So I just wanted to put that out there that if you're watching this class um, now or in the future and you are a people pleaser, these are gonna have an additional challenge for you to overcome um, because people pleasers have like a fundamental, a psychological block that they must first work out before they can start, start implementing the confidence of rephrasing certain words or sentences or statements. So um, again, this is to get your gears going to start thinking of how can I sound a little bit more confident, even if I don't feel confident, because I'm all about, there's no shame in uh, faking it until you make it.